Hello and welcome to Massive Crit. In this video we are going to take a sneak peek at the new sentry rules in the upcoming White Dwarf 476. Away we go. First of all, I just want to apologise for the quality of the photos. It's just the best that I've got right now, but we're going to read through it all, so hopefully it will make sense in the end. Here we go. Let's see how it reads. So, sentries. Missions from the Critical Operations Sentries Mission Pack use the sentries mission rules, which is a prologue to the battle in which you will play through a series of sentry patrols. See below. The attacker's intruders can attempt to infiltrate the kill zone, take up key positions and complete objectives ahead of the main assault. The defender's sentries must attempt to stop the intruders by patrolling the kill zone and discovering them. If a mission uses the sentry's mission rules, the following changes take effect for the mission sequence. So straight away I'm a little concerned with this. It seems like our first mission pack for Kill Team and I bloody hope Games Workshop doesn't Follow in the footsteps of 40k with Seasons. We don't want Seasons for Kill Team Games Workshop, so please, no. But let's carry on. In the setup operative step, operatives are not set up as normal. Instead, the defender sets up two sentries with an engage order, and the attacker sets up one intruder with a conceal order. If they cannot be set up with these orders, they cannot be selected as sentries or intruders. These are operatives from their kill team, they, and they must be set up wholly within the player's drop zone. They cannot use any rules that allow them to be set up elsewhere. In the scouting step, the players do not select and resolve pre-game scouting options. Instead, they resolve sentry patrols as described below. Victory points cannot be scored during a sentry patrol once the alarm is raised, continue the battle as described opposite. So it sounds a little like a Metal Gear Solid phase before the battle begins. Like um, the attacker has like a snake operative that has to run around and do things undetected, and the defender has some like goons, a couple of goons to, to stop Snake from, from doing these things. But it also says that victory points can't be scored uh, during this, this sentry thing. So be interested to see what the actual point of this is then. So let's take a read at Sentry Patrol. So Sentry Patrols are conducted in rounds, each of which consists of a Sentry Phase and an Intruder Phase. So the Sentry Phase. The Defender selects one of their Sentries and both players roll off. If their results are the same, that Sentry pre performs a pass action. If the Defender's result is higher than the Attacker's, the Defender performs a normal move action with that Sentry. If the Attacker result is higher than the defenders, the attacker performs a normal move action with that sentry. Each time a sentry performs a normal move action in the sentry phase, the player moving it rolls 1d6 and moves that operative up to a number of black increments equal to the result of d6. The players repeat this process until all the defender sentries have been moved or passed, or until the alarm is raised, the opposite whichever comes first. So we've got a little example here. The, the defender selects one of their sentries and both players roll a d6. The attacker's result is a 4 and the defender's result is a 2. Therefore the attacker performs a normal move action with that sentry. The attacker rolls 1d6 and the result of 3. Therefore they can move that sentry up to 3 black. That sounds pretty self-explanatory so let's move on. So. Once all the defender's sentries have been moved or passed, and if the alarm has not been raised, the sentry phase ends. So, now we're heading into the intruder phase. So, the attacker activates their intruder as if it were the firefight phase, with the following additional rules. They must have a conceal order. They can only perform dash, normal move, pass, or mission actions, excluding tack-off mission actions. Okay, so once the intruder has been activated, and if the alarm has not been raised, see below, the intruder phase ends and a new sentry protocol round begins. So a round of this like pre-game phase consists of a sentry phase where the defender rolls off 
against the attacker to see who can move d6 black. And then we have the intruder phase where the intruder can act as if he's within, as if he's in the firefight phase. So I'm guessing he can use all his APL, but his actions are limited. Um, so he can only sort of like normal move, dash and mission objective. So he can't shoot or charge or fight. He can just run around and try and perform mission actions that we can't score VPs on. So if the alarm is not raised, we go on to the next round of the sentry patrol phase. So it just perpetually goes on unless the alarm goes off. So how do we raise the alarm? So the alarm is raised if any of the following conditions are met. The intruder is in sentry's line of sight. Note that as the intruder always has a concealed order, it must be visible, not obscured, and not in cover to be in sentry's line of sight. Okay, pretty standard. The intruder is visible to and within blue of a sentry. The intruder is within red of the defender's drop zone, unless otherwise specified. And the attacker chooses to begin the assault, which automatically raises the alarm. Any other conditions specified by the mission. Okay. So when the alarm is raised, the sentry patrol immediately ends after that action and the players set up their remaining operatives as specified by the setup operative step of the mission sequence. They cannot use any rules that allow them to set up operatives elsewhere. The players then begin the battle as normal with the following rules. So in the first initiative phase, the players roll off and the winner decides who has the initiative. During the first turning point, each time an operative that was selected as an intruder or sentry is activated, the controlling player can change its order rather than needing to have the order given to it when it was set up before the battle. Okay. So Sentry Patrol renders the initiative phase obsolete. So no additional barricades, dashes, or changes of orders, but we've got some designers notes. So let's take a look at that. The Sentry's mission pack rule presented in this publication differs slightly from that presented in Kill Team Morrock. It has simply been modified as appropriate for the missions presented in this publication. It does not supersede the mission rule for that publication. So it seems Killzone Morak is gonna have rules similar to this. It looks like the specific expansions rules are gonna be very similar to this. So do we, do we need to buy this? Like, I, I don't know. Let's take a look at some of the missions. So here we have advanced capture. So let's have a look at the mission rule. So sentry page 43, I think that's what we just read. The alarm is also raised if the intruder performs the secure asset action three times. And then we've also got alpha. At the end of the select drop zone step, the defender selects one objective marker to be their alpha objective marker and moves it white directly towards their kill zone edge. The attacker then selects one objective marker to be their alpha objective marker. They cannot select the defender's alpha objective marker and moves it white directly towards their kill zone edge. Operatives can perform the following mission actions. So secure asset. An operative can perform this action while it controls an objective marker. Move that objective marker up to white directly towards your kill zone edge. Each objective marker can only be moved once per intruder phase. Ah, so this is one of the mission actions that can be performed by the intruder. So we're not scoring VPs at this point, but we can move objective markers closer to our drop zone. So this will give us an edge over our opponent, but we can only perform this action three times until the alarm is raised. So let's take a look at claim asset. An operative can perform this action while it controls an objective marker until the start of the next turning point or until an enemy kill team claims that objective marker, whichever comes first, that operative marker is claimed by your kill team. This action cannot be performed during a sentry patrol. Okay, so the mission objective is at the end of each turning point and at the end of the battle, if one or more objective markers are claimed by your kill team, see the claim asset action above, you score one VP, if more objective markers are claimed by your kill team than are claimed by your opponent's kill team, you score one VP. 
if your opponent's alpha objective marker is claimed by your kill team, you score one VP. So I think it's making sense at this point. It's the sentry mission rules. It's just um, a pre-game to give you like the upper hand in the actual game against your opponent. So that might be quite fun. Uh, you know, so let's take a look at another mission to make sure. So spike data core mission rules sentries. The alarm is also raised if an intruder performs the breach defense layer action below. Operatives can perform the following mission actions. So access terminal. An operative can perform this action while it controls an objective marker that has not been accessed during this turning point. If it does so, that objective marker has been accessed this turning point. And then we have breach defense layer. An operative, the attacker, controls can perform this action while in while it controls an objective marker and no objective markers are the alpha terminal until the end of the battle that objective marker is the alpha terminal and the mission objective each time a friendly operative performs the access terminal action you score one vp if that operative marker is the alpha terminal you score two vps instead so in this mission during the sentry mission phase i suppose the intruder will try and perform breach defense layer to turn an objective into an alpha terminal preferably the one closest to their drop zone to give them an edge. So what are my thoughts on this? Well, I think it might be quite fun when I'm playing with friends, just one game in an evening or something like that after work. Might be okay. From a competitive point of view, um, it's going to make the games longer. So I'm not too sure if that's the right thing for the, the competitive scene. Um, I'm not sure if the White Dwarf is worth buying if you're only going to buy it for this because we're going to get rules in the Moloch box. So if you tend to get that or get the book when it's released separately, I don't know. Uh, I'll leave that one up to you. I'm starting to become a little bit concerned with the rules below in Kill Team. I don't want it to end up like 40k. But what do you think? Are you in or out? Let me know in the comments down below. I'll leave the remaining missions in the outro so you can screenshot them or do whatever you want with them, whatever you need to do. And until next time, may you always crit massive.